everybody. Now, in these useful utility videos, I'm going to be demystifying a few different utility modules. Now, these are modules which I will often hear people talking about or will show up when I'm reading about modular online, but for one reason or another, I never quite figured out what they are or how they could be useful especially earlier on in my modular journey. Now this is probably because they don't generate cool sounds or mangle audio in really flashy ways, but that doesn't mean that they can't be really useful in creating new and interesting sounds. In this video, we're gonna be looking at switches and what sorts of possibilities they unlock for our patching. So let's take a look. So, what is a switch? Often called a sequential switch, these modules will allow you to easily reroute inputs to outputs without having to do any repatching. One of the simplest examples is the 2HP switch, which has four inputs at the top of the module, and this can accept either audio or CV, so you might have four different voices or four different drum patterns which you want to easily be able to switch between. From the output, you'll receive one of these signals at a time, and you can use the knob or a separate CV signal to switch between these seamlessly. And many sequential switch modules will allow you to send a pulse or a gate to step between them in sequence. Bigger switches like the Synapse from Qubit will not only allow you to send multiple inputs to one output, but also one input to multiple outputs. So you could take one signal and send it to multiple effects processes, for example. Now let's take a look at some examples using Synapse. Now this module adds a lot more functionality to a simple switch module, but we're gonna ignore that for the moment and just take a look at the basics. First, I'm gonna take a look at routing many inputs to a single output. And one example where that might be useful is for varying rhythmic patterns. In this patch, I've got four different patterns coming from Pulsar, and these are each going into their own channel on Synapse. And then I'm taking one channel at a time and using it to trigger this sound here. So you can see, on Pulsar here, this is the rhythm that we're listening to. You'll see at the top here that there are four different coloured lights for each input channel, and these are matched on the bottom with the same colours for the outputs. So if I want to reroute the inputs to the outputs, all I have to do is turn this knob, and you'll see that now we are listening to the pink channel, which is channel two up here. If I turn over to the green, then we're listening to green. If I change to red, now we're listening to red. So in this way, it's really easy to see exactly what we're listening to um, at any time. So just to give you an overview of the different patterns that we've got coming from Pulsar, in channel one, we have this blue pattern here, which you can see over here. If we switch that to the pink pattern, that's what that one looks like. If we switch to the green, that's what that one looks like. And then the red is the same sort of thing, but just shifted over one to give us a bit of variation. So if we then come back to blue, there we are. So you can see immediately that at the turn of a knob, it's really easy to create something very fluid and musical. Whereas if I wanted to do this without the switch, I'd have to sort of have, if I take this out, this is the output from the synapse. I'd have my four different patterns here and I'd start with one striking this low pass gate. And then I think, okay, well now I've got to switch it and try and do that as quickly as possible. And I mean, that's rubbish already. And then I've sort of lost count of what patterns which so now I've got to check okay well this one maybe I want this one next and then that's gotten in the, and it's just like a complete hassle and it's really hard to do something that's musical and fluid whereas if I've got them all set up here then that is a heck of a lot easier. Alternatively I could use a gate signal to basically turn the knob for me and change patterns at regular intervals or even irregular intervals if I wanted. Right now I've got this um, pulse from Pamela's new workout set to change the pattern every few bars. So if I put that into the advanced input here on Synapse, you can see that we're listening to the red pattern here, and now the green pattern. And now it will switch to the pink one there, and then it's gonna to switch to blue then. Great. So if we wanted to hear what this sounds like in context, we can bring in some other sounds. So here I've got just a little hi-hat keeping time. And here I've got a sort of kick bass sound which is being triggered by the clock output from Pulsar. And then here I've got a sort of noisy snare. And if we bring these up and sort of mix them together, you can hear how it can be used in contexts like creating drum patterns and that sort of thing. 
Now let's take a look at how we can route one input to many outputs. So at the moment we have one voice and that is the chord V2. That's going through a low pass gate to make it sound plucky and we're getting the melody from Ornament and Crime over here. But we've just got this one voice coming through channel one of Synapse. And you can see that there's a blue light here and that is matched by a blue light on the output. So all that's happening is that this sound is going straight from the input to the output. That is then going to the mixer, completely unaffected, and going out to the speakers. So what I've got here though is three different processes which I am going to mix and match to create an interesting sort of effect. So if I switch over to the second channel, so now you can see that the blue dot has moved to output number two. That means if we follow output two, it's going to the prism and that's giving us some nice bit crushing and delay effects. If I switch over to output three, the blue dot is on output three and we've got a nice low pass filter here. And then output four, we've got a band pass filter. Now again, if I want to route this one voice to any of these four outputs, I can just turn the terminal knob. And if I want to return to the default routing, I can just click it. And instead of automatically stepping through using the advanced input like we did last time, I can take this LFO coming from Pamela's new workout and I'll plug it into the terminal input and you'll see that the blue light should shift backwards and forwards in accordance with the LFO. Now if I add a little bit of reverb with clouds and maybe a bass line, then we're on our way to a nice little patch. So now that we know what a switch does in general, let's take a look at the unique functionality that Synapse can offer us. And this is all sort of based around the idea of a crossfading switch. So by now you will have noticed that instead of one input per channel, we have two. So we can feed two different sounds or CV sources into them. So if I just bring up what's on channel one, this is a sound coming from the chord and the knob is completely counterclockwise. So we're only listening to this signal. If I then turn the knob, we'll blend in the second signal as well. So that's a mixture between the two. And if I turn the knob fully clockwise, then we only have the sound coming from the STO. So this is great because it allows us to blend two signals together and create really interesting mixes between them. And this inertia knob here, if we turn that up, will smooth out the blending. So if I make a dramatic move, it's not as dramatic as if we had no inertia on, where it's really obvious. This gives it just a little bit more subtlety and makes it a bit more musical. So if we put inertia fully up, it takes quite a while to actually switch between the two distinct signals. So there are four built-in LFOs, one for each channel, and these will effectively turn these knobs for us. So what I can do is hold down the scatter button and move the crossfade knob, and that will determine the amplitude of the LFO. So if I have uh, completely counterclockwise, then there's no LFO. If I bring it up to middle, then it's one times, so it will just go all the way to one side and all the way to the other side. And if I hold and bring it all the way clockwise, then we get two times. So it will sort of hang out on either end for a bit longer. And then I can change the frequency by holding the scatter button and turning the inertia knob. So we can go really quite slow and get some nice subtle effects. Or I can turn it up quite quick, even into audio rate. So even if we just have like a little LFO going quite slowly, this will still add a little bit of subtlety and a little bit more interest to your patches. If we add something like clouds, this can create some really nice atmospheres. 
So that's the core feature which really sets Synapse apart. It also offers memory, so we can save eight different uh, sets of these crossfader states. So this might be a particularly nice preset. I can save that and then switch between eight different presets at will, which can be really helpful if you're in a set and need to prevent repatching between songs and that kind of thing. And we can also adjust the master volume of each channel if we hold down the terminal and change the uh, crossfade knob here. So obviously if we turn it counterclockwise, we have a low volume. And if we bring it up, then we have a high volume. That's really useful if you are running out of VCAs or don't have something like a mixer here. I will often send the voices here first and then into the Synapse, but if you don't have room, then this is a really handy feature too. So now that we know what Synapse can offer us, let's take a look at how we can use it in a few different musical contexts. So in this first patch, we're going to take a look at what I would most commonly use Synapse for, and that is for switching and transposing melodies. So we've got three voices going on here. If I just turn them all down apart from one, and I'll bring down clouds so we can hear it a bit better, and I'll even just take it directly into the mixer so that we're not hearing any of the processing. So this is just the raw sound and we have set rings to the green mode, so that is giving us a nice sort of metallic bell sound. And we're getting the melody from Synapse. Now, there's a lot going on here, so let me just break it down a little bit. First of all, we're taking CV from Pamela's new workout. We're then feeding this all into Synapse, which is deciding what CV to eventually send out to Ornament and Crime, and that is then quantizing the CV into a pentatonic major scale triggered by Pulsar. So, if I just sort of set all of this Synapse stuff to neutral, so we're getting rid of all of the internal modulation and all of that. Here we go. We are listening to channel one, um, channel A. So this is, in effect, the first channel of Pamela's new workout. So what I've done here is I've basically treated um, Pamela's new workout as four separate channels and with two different variations of each melody. So in output number one, we've got this little melody here, a nice sort of low to medium melody. Then if I switch to channel B, which is output five here on Pamela's new workout, it's the same sort of melody, we've got the same wave, we've got um, the same sort of thing going on, but it's just a bit higher. So we've got a little sort of transposition on the original melody. So again, this is output one of Pamela's new workout. And this is output five. And then I've done the same sort of thing again. So if we move to uh, channel two of Synapse, we're listening to A here. That is uh, output two of Pamela's new workout. And then if I change to the B channel here, that is output six of Pamela's new workout. And again, it's the same sort of thing, but just a little bit higher. If I move to channel three A of Synapse, that's what we've got coming out of output three Pamela's new workout. A nice sort of high twinkly melody. If I switch over to B or output seven, we've got the same sort of thing, but a bit lower. And then finally, output four of Pamela's new workout, a really sort of low, slow melody. Output eight is the same sort of thing, but a bit higher. So what I've really got here is four key patterns with two variations of each. So what Synapse is doing is deciding, first of all, which of the four main patterns to choose. And then we are crossfading between the two different variations. So what I'm going to do is make use of the internal LFOs. I'm going to set all of these to the middle position. So we are crossfaded equally between both variations of the melody. And then I'm going to hold scatter and set the LFO amplitude to medium so that we get a, 
a nice equal LFO which basically just turns this knob back and forth like that. So now I don't have to touch any of these knobs, it's just going to do all of this automatically for me. And in fact I'm going to add a little bit of inertia just to smoothen things out a little bit. And on top of that I'm going to take the clock output from Chance and I'm going to put that in the scatter so that every so often we will switch, like just happened there, to a different one of the four key melodies. All of these um, four outputs are then going into the CV inputs of Ornament and Crime and they are being quantized again all into pentatonic major scales and I'm just taking one of them into rings here and then I'm also taking another one of them out to the STO. So if we have a listen to what that sounds like, where's that going? We'll take that. I'll plug it in here. Similar sort of thing that you can hear going on there. If I change the uh, CV coming from Synapse, you'll hear that we've got the same sort of thing going on. So what I'm then doing is taking the STO and rings and I'm putting them into prism. So if we bring, this is rings here. And this is STO. So you can hear we've got some um, bit rate and sample rate reduction going on there and some nice delay. A little bit of filtering to take off the um, high end there as well and giving it a nice sort of atmosphere. I'm then also taking, as per usual, a drone from Chord. This is quite low so you might need headphones to hear it. Just the root note there to give it some weight. And then adding some reverb, some stereo spread and a little bit of feedback from clouds. And because of the way that the position and size are set, we're also getting another sort of layer of delay and smoothing things out really nicely. So in this patch we're using Synapse in quite a fun and interesting way. We have four different voices that are all playing the same melody and what we're doing is switching between them very quickly to create an interesting sort of glitchy chaotic effect. So if I take away the processing so that we can hear exactly what's going on, just take the direct output from Synapse here. Now you can hear that we've got four sort of distinct voices that we're switching between quite quickly. If I stop switching between them, we can hear the voices individually. So this is the scanned here from Qubit. This is the bell from 2HP. This is chord again from Qubit. And this is rings from Mutable Instruments. So all four of these voices are being fed the same melody. We're getting the melody by taking a control voltage from Pamela's new workout. And we are sending that to the CV in on ornament and crime in quantum main mode. We are then using the pulsar to trigger a new note and that is then being sent to this malt and sent out to the four different voices. We're also using the same pulse to trigger the bell and trigger the scan. And that is also what I've malted out here to use in the advance and scatter options on the synapse. So if I put this into advance, we can hear that we step predictably through the four different voices and create another sort of interesting rhythm on top of everything else. However, if we put it into the scatter, we switch sort of randomly between the voices and we get a much more chaotic result, which I think works well for this patch. So I'm gonna choose scatter. But if I take it out again, just for a second, we can hear what else we're doing with the voices using this control voltage from Chance. We're multing it out here and we are taking it to the damping on bell. We are taking it to the damping and position on rings. We're also sending it to the waveform on chord. 
and to the shape over here on scanned. So if I plug that back into Prism, we can hear that we are also using uh, this CV from Chance to affect the cutoff of the filter. And we're also applying some delay there. And that is then being sent to Clouds. So if I put this back in, make it stereo. You can hear that we're doing the same sort of thing that you usually do, adding a bit of reverb, a little bit of stereo spread, just making it a bit more interesting and atmospheric. And there's the finished patch. So in this example, we're using Synapse in a bit of an unconventional way. If I just turn down everything that isn't coming through Synapse, you'll be able to hear what's going on. So first of all, we are taking a drone from Chord. If I just take that out so that uh, you can hear what's coming directly from that, that's what we're getting from Chord. Okay, so just a pure, simple drone. But what we're doing is then sending that here to four different filters. And these filters are set to four different frequencies. And you can see that the resonance is quite high on all of them so that it's picking out these frequencies and creating tones of their own. So each one of these tones is going to a different channel on Synapse and we're simply switching between them. So if I take out this CV, we can step through each channel and hear the different tones that we have highlighted. Now that is also going to Prism um, for some effects and processing. So if I just take out the direct output from Synapse again, this is what we are starting with. And then what um, the Prism is doing is just taking off a bit of the high end, um, adding some delay, which you can hear and a little bit of bit crushing as well to just give the sound a bit more character. So once we have that, let's take our CV and put it into the terminal input. So this will in effect sequence um, between these four different tones that we've selected. I'm using a random voltage from Pamela's new workout over here. Um, and that is giving us an interesting sort of quite erratic uh, pulse. So then that voice is being complemented by a, another drone from uh, Scanned over here, also by Qubit. And that is going into clouds. And the wet dry is about half and half. And the wet signal is pitched all the way up. So we're getting a nice sort of blend of the original signal and a pitched up version. And then on channel three, we have this sort of bass kick drum sound. That's coming from STO. Um, and the way that we're getting this like pulsating kick drum sound is by adjusting the linear FM. And I've malted out the same random uh, random pulse signal that we're getting from Hammer's new workout so that it's tied exactly to the synapse um, and just makes everything sound a bit more coherent. And then finally, we also have a little sort of hi-hat sound and that is just white noise coming from Chance, going through the LXD on the 6 dB filter. Um, that is being triggered by a slightly different um, rhythm from Pamela's new workout, which is, um, it's, it's got a little bit of a random skip so that every so often we miss a note and it just makes it a bit more interesting than straight notes all the way through. Um, and we've got a little bit of dynamic going on um, by taking the wavetable output from Chance, um, adjusting that with the offset attenuator um, by ALM, and then using that signal to uh, adjust the strength of the pulse. And that is our final patch. So there you go. I hope that this video has helped to demystify switches and give you some ideas about how they can be used in your patching. A huge thank you to Qubit Electronics for sponsoring this video and helping me to make even more videos for you guys. You can check out the Synapse and all of their other modules on the website down below. Thanks again and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.